If the kidneys and lungs can keep up, urination and breathing compensate for slight changes in blood pH, ensuring a healthy blood pH level of 7.4. Since the blood pH changes only slightly and the function of the kidneys and lungs compensate for these changes, can you explain why eating an alkalinizing diet and ensuring a urine pH of 6.5 to 7.5 is so important? Will you also please speak to the relation between cellular pH, blood pH, and urine pH? So yes, let's look at this issue of cells, cellular pH, blood pH, urine pH. The thing we're really interested in is what's going on inside the cell. Inside the cell, the pH regulates within a thousandth of a pH unit. So tiny differences in the logarithmic system called pH have profound implications for cell function. But doing arterial and venous blood gas measurements is cumbersome and expensive, and even then doesn't get inside the cell. And we know that when you have enough buffering magnesium inside the cell, then the efficiency of protein synthesis, of DNA translation, of production of things that cell is responsible for doing, over 90% will pass quality control. Whereas if the cell is just a little bit acid inside the cell because of a lack of magnesium, maybe less than 10% of the products will pass quality control. That's a terrible energetic burden on the cell. The ATP to ADP ratio begins to go down, meaning the cell loses energy because one molecule of magnesium is necessary for each molecule of ATP in order for that ATP to express uh, its potential energy. And indeed, the proton gradient for which they gave Mitchell the Nobel Prize. The proton gradient depends upon magnesium to buffer the acids produced by the mitochondria, delivered to the cytoplasm and making the cell more acidic unless the cell is constantly replenishing magnesium and removing that acid from the cell. So cell pH is the most important and the most dynamic and the hardest to measure. And as the question correctly said, the bicarbonate system in the blood conserves the blood pH, but, and this is a point I made before that I need to make again, small changes in blood pH have profound meanings in terms of cell pH dependent functions, and therefore a little bit of difference in the blood pH is important, even in the face of the bicarbonate system that keeps the CO2 and bicarbonate uh, under enzymatic regulation, which, by the way, is why you shouldn't just swallow bicarbonates to alkalinize yourself. That impairs stomach acid digestion, and it does not impact the body because the carbonic anhydrase regulates the bicarbonate to CO2 level based on the lungs and kidney function. Now, the urine pH is even more interesting. During the day when we're active, I've been told that there are more than 20 variables that influence urine pH during the day. But interestingly, during rest, the fluid in the bladder equilibrates with the lining cells, and so once a day, after six or more hours of rest, the next urine pH gives us a measure, an indirect measure, but a meaningful clinical measure of the status of the cell. And healthy people may have a little extra acid, therefore their urine after rest will be below seven, which is neutral. And the healthy range that we standardized many years ago and that we continue to advocate is 6.5 to 7.5. If you're below that, even a little bit, you want extra doses of perk mag plus start and perk holding citrate, at least two a day, two doses a day for maintenance. That's two capsules and a teaspoon, two capsules of perk mag plus guard and a teaspoon of choline citrate. You can add that to ascorbate if you want. You can add that to other liquids, including herbal beverages if you want. And there was a fellow named Seagard Anderson, 
And he put this issue of venous and arterial pH and the relationship between carbon dioxide and bicarbonate on the map. And I'm going to ask um, Melissa to uh, send to those of you who are interested a link uh, to show how small is the healthy zone and how large is the zone of metabolic acidosis uh, and related imbalances uh, in pH. So yes, the blood is conserved, but we can still understand the meaning. Yes, the urine is an indirect rather than direct measure of what's going on in the cells, but after six or more hours of rest, that urine equilibrates with the lining cells, and the healthy zone is 6.5 to 7.5, which means uh, two doses a day of PERC-MAG plus garden colon citrate, plus an extra dose for each half pH unit, you are below 6.5 because pH is logarithmic. And that means a difference between seven and six is a factor of 10, and a difference between seven and five is a factor of 100. So small differences on the acid side have profound implications clinically. And we have found that replenishing uh, the magnesium and choline citrate not only enhances the uptake, but corrects the choline deficiency, so you have more liquid bile, the cholinergic bile salts, you have more acetylcholine in the gut and central nervous system, and you have more choline to balance out inositol at the cell membrane. So important question about, gosh, can we really interpret the blood pH, the urine pH, the cellular pH in people? And the answer is thanks to Seagard Anderson and colleagues, yes. Uh, and uh, please uh, be guided by the clinical tools of the non-invasive but clinically predictive tools that over the years we have validated and make available to colleagues so that they can guide individualized care.